Now I recognize that some of the most popular videos on my channel are relating to how to model bodywork. And in the comments, we often get the question how we can then fix them together or how we can fit them to the bike. Well, usually when we're, mod when we're making our bodywork, we're taking fiberglass molds and with those very thin sheets, and we're gonna be joining them together with things like quick fasteners. The benefit we have now with 3D printers is that we can really go to down on modeling our own bodywork. And we can start developing how they're gonna be fit together and all the trim and details between to really improve the fit and finish. Now, I think it'd be a really cool project to do a complete overhaul design of an older model motorcycle's bodywork. Uh, but that is a bit far ahead in the future. I'm going to pull it back and take a look at the windshield of a naked motorcycle. Now, I can only take these projects as far as my resources allow. So if you do like what you see here and you want to support the channel, then please like and subscribe. Now, I probably wouldn't have taken on this project if it wasn't for getting this new 3D printer. Now, I understand it's not a Bamboo Labs and everyone raves about the Bamboo Labs. But I'm quite familiar with the Creality and it's more in my price range at the moment. And it has all of the features that I felt that I was missing, so perfect. Okay, so today I've got a fun one. This is going to be modeling, 3D printing, and then some finishing and painting afterwards. Uh, the part we're going to be modeling, or that I'm going to be modeling, is the uh, accessory fly screen for a Street Triple 765. What's going to be very useful for going through this design is to have a reference image. So here I've got a side view, a front view, and a top-down view. So that I can have a look at the part as I model it, make sure it fits everything around here. And then you can continue modeling from there. Now for me, I've already had a couple little practices just to uh, make sure that when I go through this properly, it's going to go smoothly. So as an example, this is my first one. So having these images in there is really useful to you know, start shaping it properly. Then you'll start to see whether you've covered enough material as you wanted to. I probably want to pull this out a little bit further. But then looking from the front, it doesn't look too bad. And then the second piece, I think it looks okay from the front, a little bit too square on the top. I'll probably pull it out a bit further wider and then more narrow as it goes back. But then I do want to potentially extend that with a fly screen, uh, an extended fly screen. From the side, I think it looks okay. But from the top, again, I think the angle here is a little bit off. So there's some work to do. So things that I've uh, found during the practice, I'll make sure I do better throughout the through the actual run. And then we'll get 3D printing. So let's get on. Okay, so this isn't gonna be a step-by-step -step process, but I will go through what I'm doing as I'm going, just to give you some idea of my thought process. So firstly, I want to sketch the profile that I want from the side here. Then I think I'm gonna sketch a profile from the top to get a rough shape here. I'm gonna focus on the side profile because I'm going to sweep a surface here but it's going to be rounded so yeah I think I will use a uh, an arc around here to help me sweep that surface around nicely now I want to keep this surface as simple and clean as possible and to do that I'm going to minimize the amount of entities sketch entities I'm going to use to make it so for example, the sweep profile is going to be a single entity and the path is going to be two. It's perpendicular, but I want to change it to parallel. So it's going to give me more of the shape, more of the profile that I'm looking for. So that's my first surface. Now I want to have a second surface a little bit lower down. I want to bring them to the two together to create a bit of form. So I'm going to do exactly what I've just done but a slightly different angle, and then I'm gonna chop it down a little bit. So at this point, I know that I wanna place a curve on the surface. And then from that curve, I wanna extrude or sweep a surface, which I'm then gonna to use to trim away the unwanted material, as well as act as the slope down to the lower surface. So I create a new plane so that I can get a nice view on the surface sketch out the profile and then project it to the surface. From there, I want to put a plane at the end of the path, sketch the curve that I want to sweep and then sweep that surface throughout the part. 
we need to overbuild these surfaces to make sure it all trims properly. So we have a few extensions going on as well. And once you've got everything cut roughly to size, we can merge them together even though it's not quite tidy because we can then trim them both down together in a moment. There are some adjustments to the previous sketches that we'd use to sweep those surfaces and then also adding some rounds before we merge those surfaces together. So at this point I'm reasonably happy with the profile and the form that we have here. So with that done now it's just time to start trimming the external profile getting that to fit nicely with the rest of the bike. Now this is where it gets a little bit messy. I'm basically free to trim this away at any shape, any profile from any angle. So at this point it's just a lot of uh, extrusions on various planes that I'm creating to create the profile. Now one of the reasons I chose to model the windshield is because it's actually quite a common custom part. And if we are just dealing with simple fixings, simple attachments, this is, I would say, one of the easiest parts for someone to make as a custom part that they can actually use on their bike. It's also a great test piece for 3D printing and then post-processing. So this is a great exercise in learning the process and getting used to that before moving on to a much larger scale project. Now I've tried to cram a lot into this video trying to really condense down the 3d cab modeling so if you are actually more interested in seeing the full video for the modeling of these then do let me know in the comments and i'll put together a separate video for that so i decided that i wanted to add in some stiffening features at the bottom edge to do that i used the perpendicular setting on the extension after i selected just the edges that i wanted to select so deselecting the tangent chain from there, I don't want it to run as far up as we have it here, so I drew a sketch on the midplane and then extruded a surface through to trim a portion of this away. Dragging that across to the other side, trimming it away on the other side, and then we just have to make sure everything's merged together and thicken the surface, and then we get this. Okay, so I've got two features to model here. The first one is going to be for a spring clip. This spring clip is going to slide over the central piece that we see here. This is essentially like a the panel width. And then that spring is going to help retain it in a socket or a hole. So we're going to push it through that hole and then it's going to lock it in. So once you have the part model, we move it into position. We make a copy of the internal surface and use that to split the body. And then we can remove the remaining piece of material. We can then mirror that across, move it into position, and then combine it into the main body. We now have the next feature, which is going to be a tower for a captive lock nut. This tower is going to be hollow underneath because obviously we need to get some part of the fitting here and also have the bolt go through. We'll need to access that side. Okay, so when we get a fitting like this, it's going to come with some installation instructions, things like the wall thickness for the installation or the panel thickness. So this is where I'm cutting down a small section, so it's going to slide in and it's going to fit and it's not going to move around. Then we follow the same steps as before. We move it into position, trim away the unnecessary material, mirror it across, and then we merge it into the windshield. Now I have a, um, a damaged car door sitting in my room. And I have some blue flake paint. So I might actually do something like this since I have the paint on hand. Okay, I'm going to chop this down and put it in a 3D printer. So I got a bit careless here. I was trying to prioritize the print time just to get it done quickly, seeing how fast I could get it done. Uh, and in doing so, I was trying to avoid adding in uh, support material uh, which obviously led to the shaking of the part towards the later stages of the print the later layers which ended in this okay so this is the first test print so this is a failed piece so the layers just separated towards the top end and uh, it wasn't so bad quality up until this point and then it was a uh, 
it's really not good. Uh, looking at the quality of this print, I think I probably could do without sanding it, which is probably the mistake that I made on the final print. So for this one, I made sure to include some print support, make sure that it didn't shake. I also flipped the, uh, the part upside down so it had a larger base with a narrower uh, top piece. Now the black and white video is actually taken on the Nebula camera. This is something that comes as like an extra for the uh, Creality Under 3 series. It was very simple, basically just plugged it in, didn't have to do any setup, it just worked. Now I'm a hands-on kind of person, so I always feel like, ah, it's all right, I don't need power tools, I'm going to do it all by hand, there's no problem. But if I have to do many parts like this, I'm going to get so fed up that yes, I definitely do recommend some kind of power tool to help you with the sanding and to really get a nice finish. Now here's another non-ideal situation where I'm painting outside on the balcony with cardboard down. This is just to make sure I don't ruin the balcony. But I imagine in the right environment with the right tools and maybe even a paint gun, maybe I'd get a better finish. Finally, after about eight layers of paint with sanding in between, it's starting to look the part. So after the last layer of blue, I finish off with a couple of layers of clay coat. Now, although not perfect, I'm quite happy with the outcome of this print. This is the first time I've tried printing something this kind of size and trying to finish it to be as kind of aesthetically appealing as I could. Um, I have some other design, uh, some ideas for, you know, some details to add to this, some decals or stickers, just to make it less plain. Um, but otherwise, I think I'm very happy. There are a few blemishes, being my first time and uh, yeah, being that it's the first time, I'm still quite happy with how it turned out. So what I'd like to do is start printing pieces like this with the connection point so we can start showing how these pieces can be pieced together. Uh, so I've got a couple of features in here, which of course, these are just example features that I've modeled in. Um, but going forward, when I go in more detail, when I make some more pieces, um, we'll make sure we start getting these pieced together nicely. Uh, I want to make sure that these are real upgrades from kind of what we used to be able to do from the garage. Now we, so now we've all got access to like 3D CAD and 3D printers. We're a bit more freer to explore these, these kind of uh, designs, these custom designs. And of course, I don't want to limit this just to plastics, so I would like to move this to, say, CNC pieces as well in the future. But for now, uh, I have a 3D printer and I can start modeling some uh, some bodywork pieces. In the future, if I get a motorcycle, which I'm planning hopefully very soon, um, I will definitely be basing some of these uh, projects and these designs on that motorcycle. Okay, so that's going to be it from this guy. Uh, until maybe we add some stickers, some decals or something. I want to add to the design a little bit more, so we'll probably come back to that later. Uh, but anyway, I just want to say thank you very much for sticking around, for watching, subscribing, for liking, and I'll see you in the next one.